Hey, what's up? It's uh, Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials, and uh, today I'm going to take a look at uh, how to create a gated reverb. You can uh, do this trick on an uh, analog console as well as in software. You will need to have a uh, reverb effect, a gate, two available auxiliary scents, and uh, obviously two tracks to have the auxiliary come back on when you're working on an analog board. The idea is that we're going to select a huge reverb sound with a large reverb till and we're going to be uh, cutting that with the use of a gate which is being triggered uh, on its key input by the snare signal. This is basically what the signal flow is like. We're sending the snare over the first auxiliary to the reverb. We want this to be a post fader send so that if we put the fader down that the reverb sound is going to go down. Next is to route the output of the reverb into the gate's input. Then we're gonna send the snare drum with the second auxiliary to the key input of the gate. We want this send to be pre-fader because if we pull down the fader on the snare, we don't want this to influence the gate's opening and closing behavior. Cool thing with this trick is that we can uh, select a huge sounding reverb where we can completely control the length of it with the use of this gate. Let's take a look at uh, how this is set up in a project. So here I've got my Cubase project already loaded up with some drums, but uh, you can uh, perfectly follow along with uh, any other type of host. And I'll just uh, quickly play this. I'm going to create a new uh, auxiliary track, or in uh, Cubase that's called an effects channel. And I'll just create a stereo one. And on that effects channel I'm going to go to my, uh, to my inserts and I'm going to put a reverb on there. And I'll uh, make it a really long reverb time, like uh, 8, 9 seconds, whatever. And uh, I'll put the mix all the way in 100. Now I'm going to go to my uh, snare track. And uh, I'm going to send that to this uh, auxiliary track. And that's just uh, giving it this ridiculous reverb till. So now on this effects channel, I'm going to insert a gate behind my reverb. And I'm going to set this to be a side chain activated. So it's going to listen to the key input to get triggered. I'm going to go back to my snare channel. And I'm going to use a second send. And I'm going to send that to the side chain input of my gate. I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to make sure that this is a pre-fader send. You should be able to select a pre-fader send in any other type of software as well. And I'm going to turn that on zero. So it's always going to be sent to the gate, no matter even if I uh, pull down the fader of the snare track. So now I'm going to look at the gate's settings. Because if I uh, play around with the threshold, you can hear now the gate is getting triggered by the spill, so I would need to change the threshold value. And now the fun comes with the attack, hold and release, because we can completely shape the reverb tail with this hold and release setting, and we can even have a little bit of a fade in with the attack time. This is uh, when we have no release time, but uh, we do have an increased hold time. It now stops really abrupt, but if we uh, increase that release time, we can make that more of a fade out. So you can now see how we can completely uh, change the sound of that reverb till. We can of course uh, still change the reverb settings, maybe uh, give it a different uh, room or a different coloration with the EQ settings on the reverb. And of course we can still send other instruments to this, uh, to this channel as well. We could send the overheads, but for example we could also, I don't know, send the vocals. And it always will be triggered by the snare. Let's just uh, do a small uh, test recording just for the heck of it. So now I'm uh, sending my uh, vocal to that uh, reverb as well. Let's see what it does. So now I'm uh, sending my uh, vocal to that uh, reverb as well. Let's see what it does. So now I'm uh, sending my uh, vocal to that uh, reverb as well. Let's see what it does. 
So now I'm uh, sending my uh, vocal to that uh, reverb as well. Let's see what it does. So now I'm uh, sending my uh, vocal to that uh, reverb as well. Let's see what it does. So now I'm uh, sending my uh, vocal to that uh, reverb as well. Let's see what it does. So now I'm uh, sending my uh, vocal to that uh, reverb as well. Let's see what it does. So now I'm uh, sending my uh, vocal to that uh, reverb as well. Let's see what it does. That's, uh, well, I don't know. I haven't heard that before, but it's uh, something that you could do, obviously. So um, I hope you've learned something today. It was, uh, you know, just a little bit of an experimental uh, extra tutorial. I uh, hope you, uh, you enjoyed it. This was an effect that's been uh, used in the 80s a lot to create these really big ass, you know, snare drums and these really large sounding toms. So, you know, maybe this is uh, something that you, uh, that you might use in your production. So I hope you've learned something and uh, hope to see you all soon. Peace.